Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Installation Management Command Pacific Region Director, Dr. Christine Altendorf, welcome to the Change of Command Ceremony for the United States Army Garrison Humphreys in Area 3. Today, Colonel Darren S. Concrete relinquishes command to Colonel Joseph C. Holland. The soldiers of USAG Humphreys would like to recognize and extend a sincere welcome to a number of distinguished guests here with us today. Lieutenant General and Mrs. Bernard S. Champeau, Commanding General, 8th Army. Major General and Mrs. James T. Walton, Director of Transformation and Restationing. Major General Brian McKiernan, Deputy Commanding General for Operations, 8th Army. Major General and Mrs. Tracy Thompson, Commanding General for 12th Theater Engineering Command. Brigadier General Jeffrey Milhorn, Commanding General, Corps of Engineers, Pacific Ocean Division. Brigadier General and Mrs. Stephen Farman, Commanding General, 19th Expeditionary Support Command. Dr. Christine Altendorf, Installation Management Command, Pacific Region Director. Mrs. Brenda Lee McCullough, Deputy Director, Transformation and Restationing. Colonel John R. Evans, Deputy Commanding General for Sustainment, 2nd Infantry Division. Ms. Kim Kil Hyun, National President, People to People International Korea. Command Sergeant Major John Wayne Troxell, UNC USFK Senior Enlisted Leader. And Sergeant Major Mitchell, 8th Army, Senior Enlisted Leader. Distinguished guests, fellow commanders, command sergeants, major, families, and friends, welcome to today's ceremony. The reviewing officer for today's ceremony is the Region Director for Installation Management Command Pacific, Dr. Christine Altendorf. Today's music will be provided by the 8th Army Band, directed by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Joseph Parentu. The commander of troops is Lieutenant Colonel Jose Torres. Participating in today's ceremony and represented from left to right are members of Headquarters and Headquarters Company, United States Army Garrison Humphreys, led by Lieutenant, uh, excuse me, Captain, Captain Pierre and First Sergeant Rogelio Cortez. The United States Army Garrison Color Guard, led by Command Sergeant Major Matthew D. McCoy. Department of the Army Civilians representing the various directorates led by Mr. Rex Brune of United States Army Garrison Humphreys. And 4th of the 58th Airfield Operations Battalion led by Lieutenant Colonel Mark Ott and Sergeant Major Michael Awai. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise for the invocation given by Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Hernandez. Almighty God, our gracious and caring creator, Father, we invoke your presence and your blessing upon this significant moment in the life of United States Army Garrison Humphrey, when the mantle of leadership is passed for Colonel Darren Conrad to Colonel Joseph Holland. For the outgoing commander, Colonel Conrad, we offer you our thanks. For his professional leadership, we ask your continued blessing and he and his family go on to other responsibilities. For the incoming commander, Colonel Holland, we ask your wisdom and courage to make wise decision and then design us of action. Help him to create an environment in which working is enjoyable and the challenges are fair and rewarding. May he always strive to assist every member of United States Army Garrison Humphrey to grow and develop so that each can be the person that you intend that one to be. We also ask your blessing upon him and his family. In your holy name, I pray, amen and amen. Amen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Staff Sergeant Williams, the U.S. A.G. Humphreys NCO of the Year, is presenting a bouquet of red roses to Mrs. Lori Conkright for the support she has given to Colonel Conkright and the command and coins to their son, Stephen. Red is the color of the heart and reflects the loving concern she has shown to our soldiers, civilians, and family members over the past three years. Lori's flowers are in full bloom, symbolizing the beauty and fulfillment of her support of USAG Humphreys. PFC Castro, USAG Humphreys Soldier of the Year, is presenting Mrs. Laura Holland a bouquet of yellow rosebuds. Yellow is the color of a new beginning and symbolizes her arrival as the new First Lady of the United States Army Garrison Humphreys. In time, those rosebuds will blossom, as will Mrs. Holland's relationships with the soldiers, civilians, and members of this command. The Holland sons, David and Andrew, are receiving coins, and their daughters, Emma and Julia, are receiving a single yellow rose as well, welcoming each of them to the command. Best wishes as your family embraces the challenges ahead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the troops in formation as the commander of troops begins the ceremony with the command, sound attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and the rendering of honors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise, the, rise for the playing of the national anthems of the Republic of Korea and the United States of America.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The colors are in the forefront of each unit at military ceremonies and have a place of honor as part of the official military color guard. It is a sacred honor of the command sergeant major of the command to protect the colors from harm or disrespect. Ladies and gentlemen, you will now witness the time-honored tradition of the passing of the colors by Dr. Altendorf from Colonel Conkright to Colonel Holland. The very soul of a military unit is symbolized in the colors under which it fights, for they record the glories of the past, stand guardian over its present destiny, and ensure inspiration for its future. From the earliest times, warriors have used a banner or other symbols to identify units and to serve as a rallying point for their troops. In battle, the color party marched at the front of the formation and became prime targets as victories in those days were expressed in terms of the number of enemy colors captured. The color party bore the brunt of the battle and often suffered heavy casualties. If the commander fell, someone would rally to the colors and assume the position of unit leadership. For today's soldiers, the unit colors still serve such a purpose. The colors passing from the old commander to the new is significant in many ways. With the transfer of the colors to the new leader goes the responsibility for mission accomplishment and the welfare of the soldiers, civilians, and families of the command. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5 Bravo, the undersigned assumes command of United States Army Garrison Camp Humphreys and Area 3, effective 15 June 2015, signed Colonel Joseph C. Holland, armor commanding soldiers and commanders come and go but the unit colors live on the command sergeant major passes the colors to the outgoing commander colonel concrete has held the responsibilities of command for the past 36 months he will now relinquish these duties dr altendorf region commander mcom pacific will now charge Colonel Holland with these same duties and responsibilities. Colonel Holland will now pass the colors back to the Command Sergeant Major, signifying his trust and confidence in the Command Sergeant Major and the NCO Corps represented on the field. Ladies and gentlemen, the Region Director for Installation Management Command Pacific, Dr. Christine Altendorf. Good morning. To our distinguished guest, General and Mrs. Champeau, fellow commanders and command sergeants major, the Concrete family, Darren, Lori, and Stephen, and Jake, who is not here, the Holland family, Joe, Laura, David, Andrew, Emma, and Julia. Representatives of civic and community organizations, friends and members of the U.S. Army Garrison Humphreys, thank you all for joining us today. We are here to bid farewell to the Concrites and to officially welcome our new command team, the Hollands. Many of you have witnessed the outstanding successes Colonel Darren Concrite and his Garrison team have achieved during the past three years. Under his leadership, Humphreys has transformed from a mid-sized installation, typically populated by unaccompanied soldiers on one-year assignments, to a future regional and global power projection platform within the United States Forces Korea. Overseeing the ongoing construction of more than 600 new buildings and the demolition of more than 300 existing buildings, Darren and his team have been involved in the single largest construction program in the Department of Defense and it is projected the physical land area of Camp Humphreys will expand to more than 3,500 acres 
and the total number of people who will call Camp Humphreys home is estimated to be about 34,000. The garrison support of the 8th Army and the various tenant units in the installations has been nothing short of outstanding. Darren assembled an amazing and gifted team that utilized an annual base operating budget of $86.9 million to operate, sustain, restore, and modernize infrastructure, facilities, and services in support of tenant units across the installation. One example is the garrison's management of the Humphreys Army Airfield, which is the largest and busiest Army Airfield mission in the Pacific. With more than 100,000 fixed and rotary wing aircraft movements per year, to include the aerial missions in support of the National Intelligence Agency. Darren's interaction and coordination efforts with the Republic of Korea Muro, the United States Forces Korea Transformation and Restationing Office, the Corps of Engineers Far East District, and numerous contractors and organic staff directorates proved instrumental to achieving success of both future construction master planning and the acceptance of already completed major projects. Darren also partnered closely with Korean merchants and people-to-people -people chapters in the neighboring communities to strengthen the garrison commitment to the Army's Good Neighbor program. With successes on post and off, Darren never stops striving to provide outstanding customer service. Camp Humphreys is widely known as a great community where people feel part of the Humphreys family, due large in part to Colonel Humphreys' influence. I mean, Colonel Conkright's influence. I'm going to give him a new name, Colonel Humphreys, as he leaves. It was through Darren's understanding of local civic relationships, mitigation of any negative effects of transformation and restationing on the local community, and his partnerships that not only maintained our deep strategic alliance, but advanced and strengthened it. His knowledge of the two major bilateral agreements, the Yongsan Relocation Plan and the Land Partnership Plan, was key to current and future stationing efforts across the peninsula. Colonel Conkright oversaw the movement into Humphreys of the 1st YRP unit, the 94th Military Police Battalion, the 1st LPP unit, the 304th Signal Battalion, and the 1st Rotational Forces into Korea, which was part of the Army Chief of Staff's first proof of concept plan. Darren fully understands the importance of training, not only for those tenants units residing on post, but also for his own workforce. He was fully committed to ensuring his team got the training they needed. Darren's commitment to training his workforce paid off when the garrison was presented the Army's Exemplary Workforce Development Award in 2013 and again in 2015. His attention to detail while managing the expectations of the transformation process as well as ensuring the needs of the community were being met on a daily basis truly illustrates the quality of his character. And speaking of character, in the few months that I've worked with Darren, I've observed an individual who is never off the clock. He is responsive, loyal, has a deep understanding of his projects and programs, passionate about his work, and most of all, humble. In my opinion, a walking definition of leadership. Darren, you have made a positive difference in the lives you have led and those you serve. You are definitely leaving your trademark of excellence on all aspects of Humphrey's community. Although he is an exceptional commander, all of Colonel Conkright's achievements could not have been possible without a trusted partner, um, uh, an aide, and a confidant. One who listened, loved, and defended him, yet provided him wise counsel and honest criticism. That person, of course, is Lori Conkright. Prior to the ceremony, Lori was presented the U.S. Army's Outstanding Civilian Service Medal, the 8th Army's Helping Hand Award, and the 8th Army's Dr. Mary E. Walker Award. All of the awards recognize Lori as an outstanding individual who gives selflessly of her time and her energy. The number of volunteer hours she spent promoting and participating in community events and activities is immeasurable. However, it was not about the number of volunteer hours, it was about the impact she made. Her leadership, energy, and dedication were instrumental in the growth of the Holiday Bazaar and the revitalization of the Mardi Gras Monte Carlo night fundraiser that has provided many students with college tuition assistance. She is also a yoga instructor and a wonderful ambassador to many visiting guests of Humphreys. Lori, on behalf of all of the soldiers, families, and civilian team members, I extend my heartfelt appreciation and thanks for all of your efforts. 
Also to Lori and Darren's st son, Stephen, who is here, thank you for the sacrifices you have made to support your parents in their important work. You too deserve our thanks and praise for your help in taking care of our soldiers and families. The Conkright family will depart Korea for their new home in San Antonio, Texas, where Darren will become the MCOM G7 Director of Training. Darren, I know you will excel in this position, and I truly believe the experiences you have gained as a garrison commander will have you prepared well for your new assignment. Darren, you will be missed. To the entire Holland family, a warm welcome to Korea, and most importantly, to Camp Humphreys. Colonel Holland, as this is your first assignment to Korea as an Army officer, I truly hope you and your family take the opportunity to enjoy and experience the beautiful Korean sights, cultures, and customs. Joe comes to us from Wiesbaden, Germany, where he was the U.S. Army Europe and 7th Army's Chief of Plans, Deputy Chief of Staff, G3, and prior to that he attended the U.S. Army War College at Carlisle Barracks. You've come to this command with great leadership credentials, as your many command assignments throughout your Army career will attest. Challenges here will be great, but the rewards will be even greater. You will develop skills in areas you once took for granted, and the diversity of your new portfolio will allow you to enhance your servant leader capabilities. Joe, you are inheriting a great garrison team that will support you 100%. I know you will find your new assignment professionally rewarding and personally enriching. In closing, I wish to thank everyone for coming today. To all the members of the 8th Army Band, thank you. Your musical talents inspire us and make us proud. You have truly enhanced our ceremony today. A special thanks to those who have worked so hard to ensure this ceremony is a success, a job well done. MCOM, we are the Army's home. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander of United States Army Garrison Humphreys, Colonel Darren S. Conkright. General Champeau, Dr. Altendorf, distinguished guests, I'm honored and very much humbled by your presence here today. Joining me and Colonel Joe Holland as we pass the colors and responsibilities of this command. General General Champeau, it's been an honor to serve with you and the 8th Army. A field army that is strong and getting stronger every day. Dr. Ottendorf, <clears throat> every Pacific Region employee and the units you support are extremely lucky uh, for your leadership. And I look forward to supporting you in the future from the Installation Management Command Headquarters. A special shout out to the 8th Army Band. I've seen you perform in so many different venues and you're always perfect. The soldiers of the garrison, the 458 Airfield Operations Battalion on the field, you look great, you are great. The civilians on the field, you, you represent the very best of the Department of the Army's civilian workforce. I'm so very proud of everything each and every one of you have accomplished. It was an honor to serve with you all. The last three years have been a wild ride with disaster constantly lurking around every corner. On any given day here at Camp Humphreys, the garrison and its partners we're building the USFK Northern Hub of the Future, which included a massive land and utilities development and the construction of 655 new buildings. We also managed an enormous swing space activity as we demolished many of the existing facilities to make room for the new construction. And finally, we continued our core mission of running an installation. It was a situation that was dynamic to the point that no one, whether it was the garrison or its partners, were allowed to get complacent, not even for one day. As a garrison CSM would routinely say, nothing is ever easy at Humphreys. From everyone else's perspective on the outside, I hope it looked easier than it really was. The Humphreys team accomplished some amazing things over the past years. I remember showing up in June of 2012. Many of the facilities that you see on Humphreys today did not exist then, like the new housing towers, the new elementary and high schools, the super hangar, and a number of motor pools just to name a few examples of the many. We hadn't even broken down ground on the uh, medical campus yet. When looking out over the new lands, all you really saw was a massive land development that had taken place over the past several years. It took a lot of imagination back then to visualize what Humphreys was going to look like when it grew up. 
Now when you look at the new lands, you see a sprawling city that is truly taking shape and in many cases just waiting for the final touches and the utilities to catch up. During this time of rapid change, the Garrison and our partners didn't miss a beat. As the Corps of Engineers Far East District kept digging, life continued to run as close as po to normal as possible. But none of it was easy and required a huge amount of concerted effort from everyone that is part of the Humphreys team. It was a level of cooperation I'd never seen before, as so many different agencies came together in one place to, adjust, to address the daily crisis that transformation brought about. And it was amazing. Of course, we could not have done it without the amazing leadership and support of our host nation. I would like to thank you for your friendship and all you do for our servicemen, civilians, and family members stationed here in Korea. It has been an honor to be part of such a great alliance. I had a lot of help from informal team members also. The senior spouses of Humphreys kept us honest and paved the way for a number of initiatives that improved the quality of life for our community. They had some catchy names like the Spouse Underground Network, a.k.a. The Sun, or the Witches of Eastwick, a.k.a. The Woe. They were completely selfless, selfless, and all they asked for, focusing only on the good of their unit's families. They also got a lot of help from Humphreys volunteers. Volunteers are what make good or non-existent programs into great programs. I'd be very remiss if I did not acknowledge my battle buddies. On the civilian side, Mr. Mark Cox was my deputy for more than two years. Mark is an exceptional leader and his high energy is contagious throughout the workforce. And now Mr. McKenzie, although relatively new to the team, is knocking down targets like a true veteran. Colonel Holland, you're in good hands. CSM's Pernell McCoy, I couldn't have dreamed of having better command sergeants major. You both came from operational battalions and immediately transitioned and adapted to this unique installation leadership environment. You are the epitome of the NCO Corps, and you made me look way better than I truly am. For the garrison staff, you're awesome. Truly different breed. The daily challenges you are faced with here at Humphreys are, are totally unique. You maintain installation services and an environment unlike any other in the Army. The community is deeply in your debt, and I will never forget any of you. I'd also like to recognize the Humphreys community for its incredible resilience. Things change a lot here in Humphreys, and I would challenge anyone to find a place in this base where you can't see something that's being built, destroyed, or dug up. The road you've been taking to work every day for the past year may, long, may no, no longer exist tomorrow. Due to, the, due to the construction, life can be very inconvenient at times. With all that is going on, the Humphreys community keeps moving along, literally, without a complaint. For that, I thank you for your quiet sacrifice you made day in and day out for transformation. I'd like to thank my SROs, senior responsible officers, General Williams, General Peterson, General Hupmacher, now Colonel Evans, for your great support. You're all inspiring leaders, and I'd follow you anywhere. And finally, my family. If I was a legitimate mayor here at Humphreys, my wonderful, my wonderful wife, Lori, was the shadow governor. Lori held down the fort here as a senior spouse for three years. In that time, she was the energy behind so many things that positive, positively affected each and every one of our community members. Outside the gate, Lori was the advocate of not only our current community, but also the community that is yet to come. Lori truly got local leadership and merchants thinking about the significant change in demographic that will happen over the next couple of years. And we are already seeing the fruits of her labor. I could go on and on about Lori, but I won't. But I will ask that you join me in a round of applause for all she has done for each and every one of us. <laughs> Lori, you're a beautiful person, and I love you. Stephen, my youngest son, was part of the second graduating class of the Humphreys Middle High School. <laughs> you made it. You've been a trooper through this whole adventure. I love you, and thanks for staying off the blotter. <laughs> With that, I will close out by saying that I will truly miss Camp Humphreys and all of you. This has been a great adventure that my family and I will always hold in the highest regard. Joe, I am confident that you, Laura, David, Emma, Andrew, and Julia will feel the same way. And I wish you the very best on this great journey that you and your family are about to embark on. 
Thank you. Kapsi Kapsi Da. Support and defend. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the United States Army Garrison Humphreys, Colonel Joseph C. Holland. Lieutenant General and Mrs. Champeau, Dr. Altendorf, distinguished Korean and American officers, general officers, non-commissioned officers, honored officials, soldiers, civilians, families, and friends. Thanks so very much for attending today's ceremony. Shampo Jung Jang Nim, Altendorf Kuk Jang Nim, Han Mi Kui Bin, Jang Sun, Hasa Kwan, Kong Mu Won, Jang Byong, Min Kanin Kajok, Kuriko Chin Ku, Yorobun, Onno Hangse, Cham Soke, Joshu So, Kam Samida. It's a lot different than German, Polish, and Romanian. Today is a day of thanksgiving, reflection, and introspection. As my father often remarks, today, thanks be to God that we could rise into a vertical position to take on the challenges of today and look forward to the challenges of tomorrow. Thanks to Command Sergeant Major McCoy and countless other unsung heroes here for putting together this event. Thanks to the soldiers of the 8th Army Band and the soldiers and the sol soldiers and leaders standing on the field today from 4-5 Aviation and USAG Humphreys. You have made this ceremony a fitting transition for the command and our community. Thanks to my wonderful wife, Laura, and our children, David, Emma, Andrew, and Julia, for taking on the challenges of a 12,000 mile journey from a previous assignment in Germany and enthusiastically accepting the adventure ahead. A special thanks to Colonel Darren and Lori Concrete and the entire USAG Humphreys team who worked so tirelessly to make this installation to the wonderful community that it is today. Thanks as well to the Concrites personally. In my 25 years of service, the reception and welcome we have had received here stands as the best I've ever been part of. I truly perceive that we are among friends here in our new home. While I have much to learn and I have big shoes to fill, Team Humphreys has made every effort to ensure we don't miss a beat. A special round of applause for the Concrites. <laughs> the stellar reputation of Camp Humphreys community reaches around the globe. And let me indulge you very briefly with a soldier's reflection. When I was out processing my previous duty station, Wiesbaden, Germany, a young female specialist signed off on my clearing papers. When she found I was headed to Camp Humphreys, without a pause, she exclaimed, I loved it there. When I asked why, she remarked that she enjoyed her work with an MP company, but more importantly, she said, there's so much going on and so much fun stuff to do around in Seoul, Pyeongtaek, and all the places around Humphreys. Camp Humphreys does offer so much, and not just in garrison activities, but in ways and means of security for our alliance. In my first days ever here in Korea just last week, that became very real to me. And I come fresh from the perspective of planning measures to assure NATO allies and deter Russian aggression in Eastern Europe. As we look to what is and what will become of Camp Humphreys and all of the transformational processes, construction and change, one thing is certain. Our responsibility as a garrison is to enable and sustain the tactical and operational commander's readiness to fight tonight, a responsibility that will grow in importance as we expect accept more and more units here at Camp Humphreys. Camp Humphreys is not only a premier place to live and work, but our installation is the keystone in our alliance's ability to defend freedom forward and for decades to come. The economic progress of one of our strongest allies, Korea, and the miracle on the Han River was built of the determination of two allies working together with a vision for a productive and successful future. Camp Humphreys is an integral part of not just military deterrence, but of two nations' strategic economic reliance. I am glad to take on the responsibility of command at Camp Humphreys, and I look forward to working with each of you to achieve the vision of our senior leaders 
and the intent of our commanders to accomplish the mission and enable the success of our militaries and our nations. All policies and procedures remain in effect. One team, one fight, Pacific victors, kapshi kapshi da. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the playing of the Army Song. May the God who has come anoint us with power to be ambassadors of freedom and peace. In his name, amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's change of command ceremony. Thank you for attending. Colonel Conkright and his family will remain on the reviewing stand for you to bid farewell. Following your farewells, you are cordially invited to welcome Colonel Holland and his family during a reception at the Fest Tent located to your right on the ceremonial field. <laughs>